ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ very good evening to all welcome all post graduates of fifth module of pg crash course clinical series we are happy to know that all the previous modules were really helpful and useful especially for the clinical and viva exams i'm happy to hear that pgs have responded with a positive reply thank you now today we have here with us a great and renowned teacher of national and international fame let's all welcome dr kirti singh warm welcome ma'am from all of us thank you thank you so ma much madam is a director and professor in the department of ophthalmology at gurunanak eye center maulana azad medical college ma'am when we started planning for this program ma'am the pgs who suggested your name we all wanted you for this pg curriculum and uh, so we are very happy that uh, extremely happy to have you with us for this pg teaching program Thank you. Now let me also welcome Dr. Bindu. She is our own member, scientific member, and she is a senior consultant at Peko and head of glaucoma services at Compton Eye Hospital. Welcome, Bindu. Now, oh, all PGs, again I am repeating. Please utilize this um, to the maximum. And you have the madam whom you suggested with you in front of you. So clear all your doubts and queries, and please yes. utilize the maximum. Thank you all. And now over to Bindu. Thank you, Mr. Nishan. it's really a great pleasure and really we are honored to have professor keerthy singh for our session on glaucoma as uh, as the uh, relaxation said it was a popular demand by pgs that we really found uh, we wanted you for the session though it is very hard and you are really uh, busy and busy and busy we could bring you here that is our most the first success i think pgs are really blessed to have you ma'am here Thank I you. just have a small formal introduction of her. Uh, Madam is director and professor of Guru Nanak Eye Center, Malana Azad Medical College. She did a post graduation from RP Center. She is trained in glaucoma from the Wills Eye Hospital, USC, and she also has a fellowship from Moorfields Eye Hospital, London. And she has conducted many CMEs, instruction posts, and she has many research papers, both in peer reviewed and indexed. And she has authored many textbooks. and she has many international and national awards if i start telling i think the whole session will be on this so i'm just cutting it short too short i'll tell you madam we are really blessed to have you here and like uh, just for the pgs to know we have the session today will be two case presentation one from medical college they'll present a case we'll have a discussion on that followed by another case a discussion on that and a third session by madam on medical management of glaucoma over to you madam thank you it's a real honor that the kohikod of thalmic society has called me over for this session and it's a double honor and a pleasure to hear that the pg suggested my name and that's what is really important because that means i've got across oh. to them um this program is being actually i've been doing for the nba people for the last 6 months and uh, the talk i'll be giving is a repeat of today uh, of that first one which i had given in january however i'll be happy to take over and steroid and give us any other thing they want to ask because this is the most important topic from glaucoma point of view both for clinical point of view for training and for exam point of view and i don't know how you're conducting this how can they ask me question because that's what's important they, they have to unmute themselves and ask madam and they can be all all heard online yeah okay so i'll be happy to take questions in case they wish to ask me in between it doesn't make a difference if they feel no question for all pgs you know i remember my pg days as i'm sure of vijay lakshmi and bindu do we always used to feel stupid in asking some questions to our teachers because you said they'll say that you don't know this never feel that if you don't ask the questions now later on it will be too late so no question is stupid if you have a doubt just ask it and any doubt you have because glaucoma is one of the diseases which you will be treating whether you want it or not you'll be treating as a ophthalmologist 
you be treating medically for all surgically for some and it's going to come up somewhere or the other because it's the commonest cause of irreversible blindness so having said that you can have the first uh, pg presenting you can present in 5 or 6 minutes as you would present in an exam okay so the first case i believe was uh, from meeda meeda can you start your presentation what's the name of the doctor again meeda 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 okay Yes, Dr. Mehta. Let's have the conversation. Ma'am, you can also ask in between lots of questions to them. So one of them will unmute and be answering you. No problem. That's what I'm saying. It has to be an interactive yeah. session. Exactly. That's the benefit yeah. of digital technology. Yes. Anytime, unmute and ask. That's a pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Meda, your video is not on. I think. Um. Meda, in case you have some problem, should we start with Shabiba? Yes, madam. Uh. You are ready, Meda? No, madam. I am not able to share. Okay, Shabiba, what about you? Okay, madam, I will share the screen. Ah, uh, Bindu, just note that there are slight changes in form, madam. About it. Okay, madam, now Shabiba is presenting as Meda needs some more time for screen sharing. No problem. No problem. can i start ma'am yes okay good evening all one minute my patient is a 22 year old male patient he had history of injury to left eye with cricket board 10 days back there is no history of flutters or flashes no history of any defective vision no history of nausea or vomiting or colored halos he consulted nearby hospital and patient started on uh, topical moxifloxacin plus dexamethasone for four times per day and homotropin from the local hospital uh, past history and family is saying nothing relevant no history of any uh, glaucoma history in the family personal history nothing relevant there is uh, any other drug usage general examination and specific examination was within normal limits on ocular examination Uh, best corrected visual acuity was uh, 66 both eye near vision n6 and color vision normal head posture is normal no facial asymmetry uh, orbital margins intact orthophoric extraocular movements are full globe is firm uh, street lamp examination of right eye uh, uh, lid and adenex are normal conjunctiva normal cornea clear corneal sensation is normal uh, with a normal uh, anterior chamber depth with van der rik grade 3 Iris is normal color and pattern. Uh, pupil is central three millimeter. Both direct and consensual reflex is brisk. Lens is clear. Anterior vitreous is clear. Left eye examination. Lid and adenex are normal. Conjunctiva normal. Cornea normal size and shape with uh, normal transparency. Few scattered pigments are present over the endothelium throughout the endothelium. Corneal sensation is normal. There is no evidence of corneal edema. Anterior chamber normal depth with van der rik grade three. There is no cells or flare. Uh, there is no evidence of high femur iris normal color and pattern normal color pattern uh, could not be assessed because of dilated farm pupil is pharmacologically dilated there is no evidence of sphincter tear pupil is 5 mm dilatation which is pharmacologically dilated lens is clear and the vitreous is clear uh, intraocular pressure by applanation tonometry at 11 uh, am right eye 20 mm of mercury and in the left eye 50 mm of mercury and uh, central corneal thickness 544 and 546 micrometer respectively and on gonioscopy right eye open angle you can see up to the ciliary body band in the left eye uh, 
open angle uh, in, in this also ciliary body band can be seen in our four quadrants and patchy pigmentation seen in the inferior angle there is no evidence of angle recession or blood clot and uh, fundus examination uh, right eye media clear disc is normal size and shape uh, uh, with cup disc ratio of 0.6 both vertically and horizontally and uh, inferior nrr is slightly thinner compared to superior uh, nrr is pink vessel peripapillary area is normal vessels are rising centrally with av ratio of 2 is to 3 foveolar reflex is present and the background retina appears normal fundus examination of the left eye media clear disc normal size and shape cup disc ratio of uh, 0.7 both vertically and horizontally uh, ISNT rule is maintained with uh, the disc concentric enlargement of the uh, disc cup. Uh, NRR is pink. Peripapillary area appears normal. Vessels are rising centrally with AV ratio of 2 is to 3. Foveolar reflex is uh, present and background retina appears normal. And this is the HFA of the patient, uh, which is uh, just a 24 dash 2, which is reliable. It shows uh, no significant field changes. And uh, OCT of the same patient uh, also appears normal. Then uh, we came to the diagnosis of secondary open angle glaucoma left eye. The differential diagnosis may be steroid induced glaucoma or ocular hypertension or traumatic glaucoma. Okay. Uh, go back to your first slide, Dr. Shahiba. Okay. Uh, Shabiba, sorry. Okay. All right. So in the history, this let's say this is a long case for you in the exam. Okay. Yes, madam. So you have a patient who's coming to a 22-year-old male boy who has a history of cricket ball. Why has he presented to you? He, he, he has no problem in vision. He has no pain. Why has he presented? He came for second opinion. No. What for? He had no problems. His vision was 6'6". His IOP is 50, but he has no pain. So why? Yes. what is his presenting complaint? Uh, he actually came for second opinion, madam. That's only the reason. So somebody must have told him that he has yes. sarcoma. Then you're no, presenting. Madam, no, madam. Uh, second opinion for what? This just have, because of that trauma only, ma'am. Which is a little strange. So they would have something, you know. Which, so this is a presenting complaint is that he would have some complaint. Here he doesn't appear to have any complaint. So maybe you need to ask any, you know, heaviness of the eyes or any intermittent blurring of vision. Obviously here he's saying no, but then you have to be more specific because in this history, there is no presenting complaint. That is one aspect. Second okay. thing, whenever now we know that retrospectively, once you finish examining the patient, you know that this patient has glaucoma. So what is the things an examiner will ask you as the history? 22 year old male, with query traumatic glaucoma, query steroid induced glaucoma, correct? So yes, they would ask you a history of any prior injury, which you haven't done. So okay. this time he has a cricket ball injury. Is he a sportsman? Did he have these injury even before, which he has not noticed? Because obviously in 10 days, without a traumatic high femur or any uveitis, it is unlikely that he has a pressure of IOP of 50. There is something else which has happened in the past or may have happened. So you have to ask the history of any prior injury, oh, okay. any refractive correction being used, any any elastic surgery being done. Although okay. CCT is normal, but in the exam, you will not have the recourse to CCT. Okay, here yes, you've done OCT visual field there. You'll just have, you'll be able to see the intraocular pressure and gonioscopy. Okay. Yes, so you have to have the history of any, any prior surgery of the eye. Any prior trauma, any prior surgery. Am I making myself clear? Because that's how you'll treat the patient also. Yes. Third thing is we are thinking of steroid induced. He yes. has been on moxidexa for last 10 days. That's yes. a little too small a time for it happens. It, in a super in a super responder, it can happen in 10 days too, but unlikely. So you will also uh, rule out any history of drugs, systemic dr diseases or drugs. Like inhaler, is he an asthmatic? Is he on any skin ointment? Okay, because steroids by any form 
does he have any history of nephrotic syndrome or any in any lung any problem on which he is on systemic medication okay madam okay so history okay, of medication was not taken because you're thinking of steroids rural are steroids by other sources history of prior trauma since you're thinking of traumatic glaucoma refractive errors or lasik surgery again which will go in favor of patient having a glaucoma now okay. just on based on this history 22 year old male with glaucoma what are the differential diagnoses which come to your mind uh, traumatic primary or secondary secondary more, secondary, secondary would be more common traumatic uveitic pigmentary Lensing. pigmentary yes madam a uh, third decade you should be a little bit too young for pigment see that happens in third in the almost third to fourth decade okay yes ma'am you have this patient of uh, your face has gone away why i can't see your face shabiba madam i am here Yeah, so you just went away in between. Okay. So uh, I thought I'd lost the connection. So uh, so one is you will think of at the age of twenty two, you think one of secondary glaucoma is the more common one. Which primary, which secondary, or developmental glaucoma? Which one would present at this age? Now this is third decade. Twenty two years old is third decade. Which glaucoma is presented this decade? If it was a lady, you would think of eye syndrome. Eye syndrome. Okay. okay, you can still think of eye syndrome in this patient, although he's a he's. It's not only that only ladies have it; males also have it. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Pigmentary dispersion. Again, think of it. Any other? Fugues, ma'am. Sorry. Glaucoma and the cyclic crisis. uh would have pain oh, no? would have pain pasta yeah. schlossman would have pain okay any other it could be just a developmental glaucoma which has manifested now okay how would it would not be that asymmetry like one pressure was 50 and other was 20 so 20. that asymmetry in the pressure gives you a clue that it is most likely a secondary secondary glaucoma okay? so this is on the history how the viva would go based on the history itself so from okay. the you have to know from the age specific and then look at the other sources of iatrogenic glaucoma next page uh, next slide instead of saying nothing relevant you should have specified no prior history of trauma no prior history okay. of any lasik or laser, any laser surgery or any other surgical intervention specifically okay. no history of glaucoma, glaucoma. or glaucoma related blindness in the first degree relatives okay ma'am Okay. okay personal history again 22 year old you would not but no drug history okay non alcoholic non smoker that's just to complete the list okay next slide uh this is this is fine next again here you have no refractive error but if you had you would have to give the findings of the refractive correction whatever he is using you may not be able to refraction on the or in the exam time but if he is using you'll say patient is using glasses and this is the refractive correction color vision now the question would come on this first why did you check the color vision because of trauma you? madam i asked the color vision why how, how can trauma affect color vision A traumatic optic neuropathy can occur traumatic optic neuropathy with six six vision So why did you check color vision? Just because it's part of the routine? Because there's no reason here to check color vision. In glaucoma, if you check the color vision, with what test you take it? Take it. Which test did you use? Ishihara Shinobu test. Which one? You tested color vision with which test? Red uh, red desaturation. No, Shinobu Ishihara charts. Ishihara charts. Okay. Or did you do with the with the uh, Nigel's analoscope? Did you do it with the uh, Fansworth Munsell or D10? Which one? See, so this is now this is where when you say something, you will fall in a trap because number one, it was not required, and if you have just said it to impress the doc, impress the examiner, and you don't have the Ishihara chart there, 
then you are in a soup again. So only say what you have done. So Ishihara, so and number two, Ishihara chart is not relevant for congenital uh, for glaucoma. Color vision defects in glaucoma, Ishihara will not give you a clue. Color vision defect in optic neuro in uh, acquired color acquired uh, color vision defect. You need a Answer. you need a Answer. FM muscle or you need a D10. Okay, why? Because Ishihara is for red green blindness. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Correct. Ma blindness is usually congenital. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Whenever you have the macular involvement, which color goes? Which blue color? Yet. Blue. Blue. Okay. So, so it is blue. What is Colner's rule? Uh, 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 macular defects go. Blue yellow defect. injury cause uh, usually uh, red green defect and macular disease cause usually uh, blue yellow defect. Madam, madam, hello. Am I audible? No, uh, madam, now yes. it's on. Am I audible? Yes, madam. Oh, yes, madam. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes madam. madam. Yeah, so I asked, I could not, I think I lost this thing. What is Colner's yeah. rule? Actually, you can repeat it once again. Uh, okay. This is usually red green defects and Macular disease goes usually blue yellow defects. Yes. So any optic nerve defects are usually red green, and macula is blue yellow. Okay. And this is, uh, but the glaucoma is a exception to Colner's rule because here the optic nerve defect will cause a blue yellow. Okay. That is why. What was again the next question? If you come to this level, now the DIVA question would be, what, which perimetric tests are used? To pick up this color vision changes in glaucoma. Which pre perimet which perimetric tests are used? Swap. Short wave automatic perimetric. Short wave. Swap is based on the aspect of color vision being defective in glaucoma. In fact, it's very often used as an early diagnosis because blue yellow, it's a blue target on a yellow background. Okay. Now you said head posture normal, orthophoric, no facial asymmetry, orbital margins, globe firm. Next. Next slide, Bita. Shabiba, next slide. Next slide, uh, please. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, little nerd, next, sir, what do you mean by NL? No, no abnormality, then you make the full form. Don't write abbreviations. Oh, madam. Okay. Conjunctiva. What do you want to look for? This patient had a cricket ball injury 10 days ago in the left eye. What I will I would have scleral vessels, madam? No, no, you would have looked for any congestion, any okay. any arrhythmia, any congestion. And even in the orbital, you go back, just go back, go back. In the orbital margin, you didn't intact, no crepitus. Okay, madam. Okay, because orbital, which type of fracture can happen with the cricket ball injury? Lord fracture. Cricket ball. That is with the table tennis ball. You play table tennis. The ball has to, the, the missile has to be smaller than the orbit. For a blowout fracture, it has to be smaller. Yeah. So, so usually a tennis, tennis ball, a ping pong ball or a small a table tennis uh, balls. Cricket ball is usually a lateral ball and a bigger fracture, or any or any uh, rim rim defect, or any chemosis. So yeah, you should have because you are saying trauma. This patient has come to you with a trauma for a second opinion. You should look out not only for glaucoma. You have to look for other signs of trauma. 
concussion <laughs> is cricket ball would give rise to which trauma concussion trauma or penetrating or perforating concussion trauma how were the three different concussion penetrating perforating concussion uh, because of blunt trauma madam and uh, okay so the orbit orbit uh, the uh, globe is intact yes ma'am whereas in penetrating uh, penetrating globe is injured uh, but not there is no exit so the, the uh, orbit the ocular cords are are damaged they are they are not intact how to differentiate penetrating from perforating both uh, entry wound and exit wound will be there in perforating injuries very good so penetrating is only an entry wound perforating would have an exit wound okay next page and again no go back go back i i would have preferred in instead of writing extraocular movements full you should have made that diagram of the nine cardinal gazes okay madam you know how to make the cross and the other and the straight line yes madam yeah so that should have been done next please now we come to conjunctiva cornea normal size few scattered pigments endothelium now again in moment you talk about pigments in the endothelium it would be preferable you are thinking about pigment dispersion then or what else can happen what Because are the trauma. trauma one is trauma one is pigment dispersion any other cause of scattered pigments in a 22 year old male uveitis uveitis what else Fuchs heterochromic cyclitis. Okay. Okay. So, if okay. moment you say pigments, you should tell us also what type of pigments are they? Fresh looking? Are are there any KPs? You should have said no KPs. Okay. okay. Then by saying no KPs, you're almost ruling out uveitis. And okay. moment you're saying pigments, look for the the uh, pattern. is it following the krukenberg spindle pattern is it the arch triangle what way is it <coughs> like if it's fuchs it will be diffuse it's more for kps but when you moment you're saying pigments what how much is the pigmentation few scattered pigments no kps and moment you say pigment you should also say about the no iris atrophy changes okay madam okay Okay. AC depth normal AC depth with Van Herrick great thing. You all know about Van Herrick. Yes, ma'am. What is Van Herrick for? Uh, uh, comparing the peripheral AC depth with the corneal thickness, mm -hmm. which is greater to one to four. If uh, it uh, the thickness uh, is less than one fourth, uh, it is greater to one fourth. Equal to one fourth, one fourth to half, and more than half. More, more. Okay, so moment you will say Van Herricks, you can also uh, they may ask you what the grade of Van Herricks, what is the sensitivity of Van Herricks? It is only seventy six to seventy percent sensitivity. Okay. okay, iris normal color pattern, dilated, no evidence of sphincteric tear. Okay, what other things you should rule out in trauma for the pupil? Traumatic. Sorry, for the iris, for the iris, for the for the iris. One is sphincteric tear. Any other? Iridodialysis. Iridodemia. Good. That is a very rare thing, but yeah, iridodemia. Iridodialysis. Iridodialysis. Good. What else? Iris hole. Foreign body in the eye. Reflection or retroflexion of iris. Retroflexion of iris. so iridemia retroflexion that is again a very spectrum is little more severe commonly will have sphincteric tear you can have a uh, iris atrophic patches although 10 days may be too small a time for atrophy to develop or you can have also an iris hole in that case moment you see an iris hole you will think of a injury foreign. with a foreign body inside the eye this patient had cricket ball so obviously it's not for this but otherwise you would rule it out okay Then, you will come to pupil 3 mm you would say round and circular or circular okay direct okay. and consensual breast left eye 5 mm direct consensual absent 
Now I'm going to ask you again an optic urethral question. Supposing this patient had poor vision. Now this your patient is six six in the left eye. Supposing this patient had poor vision because of traumatic cataract. He also had cataract. How would you and this pupil is dilated? How would you know that left eye has good vision or not based on the pupil test? Uh, the uh, uh, consensual reflex of right eye, madam. Oh, so you would look at the consensual reflex. Good. Then in the lens, you would say clear, normal size. Now in normal position, no evidence of subluxation or 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 phacodonosis. Okay, madam. Okay, so no evidence of subluxation or phacodonosis. What is pigment on the lens called as? Gaussian ring. So gaussian ring. You would say specifically no no pigment on the lens like gaussian ring or any other pigmentation. Moment you have written this down, the okay. examiner will say okay go. Your viva is over. Okay. Because it means you have thought, you have anticipated the question because you you are thinking of trauma. Okay, what all will happen in trauma? So I induce what will happen in here. Okay. Okay. Then anterior vitreous clear. What is Schaefer sign? Uh, pigments in the anterior vitreous, which indicates indication of retinal tear. Retinal tear, retinal break, or even a retinal detachment. Okay, pigment in the anterior vitreous is the first PVR grade one. Okay. okay. Next page. Next slide. IOP by at twenty millimeters, fifty millimeters CCT. Okay, so corrected CCT. Uh, if you ask to buy it with the CCT, you will say for correction. So CCT okay. is correct. Uh, normal CCT. Normal. Uh, the Goldman tonometer is calibrated for how much CCT? Five twenty micrometer. Five twenty. What is, which study talked about CCT relation to to IOP? Ocular hypertension study. Old study. Okay, good. So, which what are the risk factors in CCT? Lower CCT is risk or higher CCT is a risk? Lower CCT. Lower. What is corneal hysteresis? Uh, corneal biomechanics. Biomechanics. So then, if you come to because once you reach that again, that means your examiner has already passed you. You are now going for more marks. So hysteresis is a new thing. CCT is okay. If the CCT is normal, but the hysteresis is low, even then your IOP may be fallaciously low. Okay, okay. this okay. is especially valid now because many patients are now 20, 30 years or 15 years post plastic surgery or cross linking. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, Gonioscopy. Uh, I would have preferred that you talk about the last structure visible and not four. Four maybe she's four maybe spades four okay. maybe or the third one shapers shapers so it's shapers is, is the shapers. most commonly used so either it's shapers or it's spades or it's she's she's would be reverse so you have to say shapers grading and it would be preferable to say let's say uh, CBB visible CBB visible okay and okay. if CBB was not visible. You should you should say anterior trabecular mesh work ATM visible. Then make an arrow, and then write CBB. That means moment you write an arrow and then write it means just opening opening with manipulation. Yes. Okay. Now in this patient, the talk will not be about angle closure because it's a very open glaucoma. Uh, but the, if it is anywhere a shallow angle, the talk would shift to angle closure glaucoma. Yes. Okay. Now, in angle closure glaucoma, you are thinking of what differentials: steroid induced angle recession and pigment dispersion. So you should have also said trabecular mesh work pigmentation grade two, no sample SC line seen, no okay. mascara line seen. Mascara line is a diffuse pigmentation of trabecular mesh work. Sample SC line is pigmentation of the collagen. Yes. Okay. So you have ruled out this is a relevant negative history or relevant negative finding. Okay, okay. ma'am. Okay. Next. Okay. Same. So here you written very well. Patchy pigmentation. Now, moment you say patchy pigmentation, it means that there has been some uveitis or some evidence of angle closure has happened. Okay. 
Okay. Next. Now, fundus examination, you have said it rightly. Only thing I have found missing was that you didn't talk about the size of the disc. The media is clear. Size is average, average disc size. Okay. Size, shape, shape is oval, vertically oval. Then come to the cup. Cup is vertically oval, concentric. Then armily ratio. What is armily ratio? There are two ways of describing glaucomatous disc damage. One is by the armily method, which is what you have spoken. CD ratio is armily technique. Okay. So CD ratio of 0.6 or 0.5 or 0.7 is the armily ratio. What is the other way of describing a disc damage? Uh, ISNT rule. No, ISCO is the conioscopy classification. PAC, PAC, G, PAC. What is DDLS? A uh, disc damage like So read about that. That is the Dr. Dr. Spade's contribution. Yeah, so he talks about the average size disc or the normal or the small disc or the large disc. And then he talks about the how much of the rim is present. It's not about the CD ratio, it's the narrowest neuretinal rim, NNR. NNRR, -R, narrowest neuretinal rim present. Then, so here you have a neuretinal rim, good rim of 0.3 to each side. So this is not a not a glaucomatous damage at all. And the color of the rim is healthy, pink color, no peripapillary atrophy. And on the right hand side, you have the red free. In the red free, I, you, there, is, there is no grossly, there is no arbitral defects visible. Good. Left eye. So same way you describe here. Here, you little bit, your notching is more and your, your temporal notch is there. And the disc is, the cup is deeper. Okay. It's deeper. If you can see the superior area, you have bayonetting of vessel and star. Superior and inferior, yes, you have bayonetting of vessels. Okay. On the nasal side, nasal side. Na yeah, here, here. See, the vessel is going like this. Same okay. way the upper is going like this. Okay, so this is bayonetting of the vessel. You can see it very well in the red free. So this cup obviously is deeper. So there is a cup disc. Uh, there's a cup cup asymmetry in the left eye and the right eye. Okay. Next. Here VFI is 99 and 99. It's reliable. Now the thing, if if perimetry, please remember, will always be asked in instruments. There's a separate station in NV for perimetry. Okay. So this you must read up properly. What is VFI? What is MD? What is CETA? Reliability indices. How many are there? What is false positive? What is false negative? What is fixation losses? So very briefly, which how much false positive and false negative have to be there for the field to be unreliable? 33 percentage. No. 20%. 33% is the older one. Okay. Your Humphrey machine, the software will tag it as double cross if it is more than 20. Okay. okay. And some ones, some machines have come to even 16%. 16. Otherwise, it's 20. Okay. And uh, how how will you, yeah, what you written is the foveal, foveal, I can't read that very well. Foveal threshold is 27 in the 37. right eye, 37. And 37. left eye is 36. 36. So that's okay for the age of this. Uh, GHT is borderline. VFI is 89. What else is there? MD what? 24-2, madam. Okay. 24-2 M is minus 2.6. Okay. So this field is almost in the norm. It's a reliable field. It's a yes, normal yes. field, okay? What is that line at the bottom? I won't take the whole class of perimeter. Gaze monitor. Gaze tracker. It's called as a gaze tracker. Stop. If there is too much excursion, that means the fixation was not accurate. Next. OCT. Again, here I can't see the signal strength. What is the signal strength? More than eight signal strength is the one in which you will take it. Okay. 
Why okay. is this? Other question would be, where, why did you do the OCT? To look for early glaucoma damage, madam. Reperimetric. Okay, so now this pressure was 50. Okay, you look for early glaucoma and what have you done in the lower field? You look for RNFL and you look for macular GCC complex? Yes, madam. Okay, so you will be asked about macular GCC and double hump. Why does it have a double hump pattern in the RNFL, the up, upper one? Uh, Why is it double superior, hump? Superior and inferior RNFL. More thicker than temporal lens. So the physiology, anatomy of the retinal nerve fibers is that they converge on the superior and inferior poles where the RNFL is thicker. It's thicker. Okay. Next. In the disc also, they can ask you what is isn't it rule based on the same philosophy that the superior and inferior are thicker. So isn't it rule is there. Then. So secondary open angle glaucoma, steroid, ocular hypertension, traumatic. Your number two diagnosis is not secondary. Is it? That is primary. Okay, ocular okay. hypertension is a primary glaucoma. Secondary yes, glaucoma ma could be steroid yes. induced or traumatic. Traumatic okay. glaucoma, yes. Or you could think of pigment dispersion glaucoma, which you ruled out because there's no signs of Rukenberg spindle or trabecular mesh work. And there's a history of trauma. You ruled okay, out angle recession. So what do you think, which type, why has trauma caused this pressure of 50? And a cupping. There is some cupping also. Acute elevation of IOP. No, why? So what is the pathophysiology here? Uh, because of trauma, uh, the pigments release will clog. Trauma has caused trabeculitis. It has caused inflammation of the trabecular meshwork. So trabecular meshwork is not able to deal with the aqueous outflow. There are only few pigments. It can't be too much because pigments are very few. There is, huh? You also have not told me about the AC cells and flare, which you should have. Okay. okay. If you're talking about traumatic glaucoma, even the inflammation part should have been covered. Okay. So okay. traumatic glaucoma, you would still keep the patient under follow-up. Because okay. angle recession, so, although it should have been visible now, but if it is not, you will still rule it out after six to seven months. Okay. Okay. Madam. What else should you do in any case of traumatic glaucoma? That means the concussion injury has been significant enough to cause trabecular damage, which has led to glaucoma, right? What okay. else can it have caused? Such a huge injury, which has caused glaucoma, what should be ruled out? Okay. You should rule out again lens dislocation. Okay. So you should dilate the patient and look for any phacodonosis. Dilate the patient and do an indirect ophthalmoscopy with indentation to rule out any peripheral break. Okay, ma'am. Okay? Because okay. it's not only glaucoma, it's ultimately patient's vision you are concerned with. And trauma okay. can cause other problems which will have a problem with the vision. Okay. Okay. And uh, so how will you treat this patient? Uh, first, we have to, uh, th in this patient, uh, there is no cells or player at this time. So we have to start, uh, stop the uh, steroid topical medication. And we want to start the uh, anti-glaucoma medication to control the IOP. Uh, in the anti-glaucoma medication, you do the IOP is 50, 5, 0. You have to bring it down to 20, 2, 0. You have to reduce the IOP by 30 millimeters. What medication will you give? Systemic uh, carbon, uh, carbonic anhydrase. So you will give systemic orzolamide. Uh, so systemic astrozolamide. Before giving astrozolamide, what history will you ask the patient? This 20-year-old boy. Uh, kidney uh, uh, kidney okay. problems. Is, is he on any... Any uh, allergy uh, to sulfur any, drugs? Very good. Any sulfur allergy and any kidney problems or any systemic problems. When you give astrozolomide, what instructions you will give to the patient so that he or she does not stop the medication in three days' time? Uh, what happens with astrozolomide? Metabolic abnormality, electrolyte abnormality will be the. What happens? Uh, the patient will have a disorientation because of hyponatremia. Yeah. 
disorientation can be occur no. then perioral numbness no what metabolic disturbance what electrolyte disturbance it always causes hypokalemia yes hypokalemia so you will that will cause what what feeling muscle weakness there will be tingling of the fingers and hands paresthesias are very common and most patients will stop the drug that this drug is causing problems in my fingers and hands so you have to tell them that this will happen to avoid that what can they take in their diet potassium supplements what are the diet which will have potassium supplements this is a clinical question banana coconut banana what else coconut water coconut water very correct what else lemon okay. lemon citrus one orange a day one lemon a day one coconut water a day or one banana a day okay ma'am so when you tell them this the compliance to the drug is what she will give acetazolamide what else will you give along with the topical medications Which topical anti glaucoma medication acute suppressants either uh, alpha agonist or beta blockers madam which one would you give first a uh, beta blockers man okay why uh, because uh, in this case acute suppressants are uh, good than increases the outflow and uh, it has iop reduction of 20 to 25 percentage what history will you ask before giving beta blockers uh, heart disease any uh, uh, respiratory problem so any asthmatic or uh, uh, copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or any heart arrhythmias any other treatment any other drugs on it and uh, for alpha agonist if you give what will you ask what ma'am what history will you ask or what advice you'll give if when you start by monodine uh, sedation will be yes. driving should so, be avoided so you should avoid commercial driving or any driving for at least a week there'll be sedation and so the preference would be you give systemic acetazolamide you can give beta blockers and or alpha agonist he seems to have a normal visual field so he has sort of reserve and the ocd is normal so rnfl are not damaged however having said that i all, i do feel that there is a cupping so if okay. there is a cupping and there is no rnfl damage you need to monitor the patient okay. and if the iop let's say doesn't come back after what do you expect so i induce clock over the iop will come back in how much time um, after stopping the medication about 2 weeks madam so 2 to 3 weeks it should come back what are the what are the amelie and becker studies for steroid induced glaucoma uh, they uh, classified the steroid responders as high responders moderate and non responders high responders means iop elevation more than 31 mm or more than 15 mm mercury from the baseline elevation and in moderate responders it is between 22 to 31 or 20 and 30 that was amelie or that was becker yes ma'am Beck, was the, Beck. and amelie said what amelie uh, studies 6 to 15 uh, from the baseline elevation so the baseline difference so amelie was a difference of 6 less than 6 6 to 15 and more than 15 and 30 20 and less than 20 was the becker, becker. so again in the viva this would be asked which studies were these and again it will again it will be asked what are what is the propensity of steroids to cause which steroids have the least propensity if you are a steroid responder what steroids can you give if you have to give steroids lotiprid no least madam lotiprid you will give lotiprid or you will give fluoromethadone fluoromethadone so you will give lotiprid or fluoromethadone normally when you stop the steroids it will come back to normal in 2 to 3 weeks except except when you have given intravitreal steroid preparation okay. in that case you may have to excise the trimethylone or whatever you may have to excise or you given depo steroids in that okay. patient you may need to excise the depo okay okay ma'am then if it if it comes the viva can also come to why do steroid induced glaucoma cause why do steroids cause glaucoma usually that's a theory question but it can be asked in the viva too okay. why 
because uh, it stabilizes the lysosomal membrane and yes. uh, which okay. inhibits the glycosaminoglycan uh, yes. okay. metabolism. So it will swell up. One theory is that. Second is uh, uh, trabecular meshwork has a phagocytic property. Corticosteroid will inhibit the phagocytic property. Correct. And uh, uh, third one, it inhibits the prostaglandin production. Usually it helps for uveoscleral outflow. And steroid particle itself can cause uh, obstruction of the trabecular meshwork. Particles, yes, but otherwise not topical drops. This patient was on moxicrosteroid drops. Other one is it causes cross-linking of the actin particle, actin meshwork and the yeah. trabecular meshwork. And the myosinin gene somewhere is linked with it because it is a inherited preposition. Okay. And moment you have a steroid responsive glaucoma, this patient at an older age may go in for open angle glaucoma. Okay. Steroid induced glaucoma sometimes just unmasks the propensity of the patient to go in for open angle. Okay. okay. So okay. this is how the questions will go. I hope I've covered. Anybody has a, any, any other question? You are satisfied, Shabiba? You passed? Yes. yes. So any other questions anybody has? How would angle recession look like? There is widening of the ciliary body band and uh, we can see underlying sclera uh, through that. Sclera, ciliary body. Angle recession, you can see the ciliary body. Sclera Gandhi, you can't see sclera through that. So what can also be asked, when you have an angle recession, you can be asked about the seven rings of trauma. Yes. Okay. And how to how do you treat penetrating that we've asked, penetrating and perforating, how to differentiate, and what are the other signs you will look for of trauma. So all the subluxations, the, the retinal tears, the washes rings, the purchased retinopathy, the Merlin's edema, the optic trauma, uh, the traumatic optic neuropathy. Okay. Okay, madam. We have the next week, next student. Yeah, Meda, are you ready now? Thank you, Thank you Shabiba. Meda, are you ready now? Yes, madam. We are still not able to share the screen. I believe you had a third one, Dr. Bindu, for the trabeclectomy. Yeah, the, no, the second one. Second one has both the disc and the it's a post trap and an open angle glaucoma. Okay. Neda, are you ready? No. You still have some problem? Yes, madam. Can somebody help you there? I think our bandwidth is low. It's Kevin and the bandwidth is low, so you need to change your internet connection. What I'll do is I'll share the uh, my lecture and then Medha can take up afterwards. Is that okay? Yes, I think. Vijay Lakshmi, we'll yeah. do that way. Yeah, that would be better, yes, madam. Okay, yeah. okay, madam. Okay. okay. May the meanwhile just get it ready with the help of someone or somebody else to present me. Yes, yeah. Okay, madam. Are my slides visible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we are going to talk about medical management of glaucoma. Now, the lecture plan in my lecture would be why when and which drugs to prescribe. Usually glaucoma has a tailored treatment. How to plan the treatment strategy? What is target IOP? 
it's not only enough to prescribe the drugs and to know when to prescribe and what to prescribe it's important to ensure that the patient uses the drugs if you've just given the drugs and the patient hasn't used any of them your whole exercise is wasteful so you have to tell the patient how to ad adherence has to be there for a lifetime how and when to instill the drugs and a bit about the newer drug formulation why obviously to preserve vision because redu reduction in iop currently is the only treatment option available to us and so many studies again in any glaucoma lecture or any glaucoma discussion you will come across these studies which you must memorize there's no other shortcut retina and glaucoma both have a lot of studies and so does amblyopia but these ones are really landmark so this is the ntg cntg study 1998 where progression was reduced from the treated and untreated from 10 to 30 per 60% patients progressed in the untreated patient and 20% in the treated and they said that for normal tension which was defined as iop at all times less than 21 you need a 30% reduction oat study or the ocular hypotension treatment study again said that 50% risk of damage is there if you medically treat the glaucoma and the risk of developing of glaucoma reduces by 50% okay however in oat study it also said that you may also observe if there if there are no risk factors okay so i will not go on the details that's a whole topic on its own you must read about these studies there's a very good textbook which talks about these studies which is medical uh, i think it is the uh, drug regimens uh, the the uh, the rct trials in glaucoma in um, in ophthalmology then you have the sigit study or the collaborative initial glaucoma treatment study which is basically chop versus drop the medicine and the surgery they found almost a similar reduction in the iop but the vision visual field and quality of life was similar but the cataract incidence was more with the with the glaucoma filtering surgery patients therefore if possible try to manage the patients with medication having said that staying in india where the very often the patients come from a rural background and can't follow up the threshold for doing cataracts uh, for the threshold for doing uh, trabeculectomy is lower in rural patients even in moderate glaucomas then the emgt study which talk about the early manifest glaucoma and this gave a very interesting figure of 10% reduction in progression risk with each millimeter iop reduction okay then the age study or advanced glaucoma intervention study where they gave the figure of 18 millimeter that if it is less than 18 millimeter in most of their patients the iop reducing iop below 18 millimeter slows limits the disease progression they started in blacks and whites so these studies are relevant and all these studies just talked about one aspect which is lowering the iop by medical means this was the age study which talked about the 17 mm that the 17 mm patients had a better visual uh, had a less visual defect score when do you start the treatment okay whenever you see a patient of glaucoma do not always think that this is open angle glaucoma i don't know about your state but in my state fish to uh, these not only the students the doctors don't do gonioscopy very often pacg is missed so before starting any medical management for glaucoma rule out angle closure aspect why because if it is angle closure aspect your number one treatment is different and number two prognosis is different okay treatment would be pi or lens extraction or trabeculectomy depending lens extraction not clear lens extraction but early cataract you may remove early you may remove earlier and if it is a bulky lens you may remove otherwise do a pi and again then afterwards follow up with medication remember one more thing after doing a pi your pacg patient doesn't become an open angle glaucoma because pacg patient is an anatomical disease and open angle glaucoma is a physiological disease 
So your angle closure patients should always behave differently for open angle glaucoma from open angle, and you must do a gonioscopy first when you start any treatment. Even if the patient has come with three medications to you in your hospital, somebody has started, and you just check the IOP and visual fields, ensure that you rule out angle closure. Okay. Like this was one of the patients who came to us with so many medications. Okay. And his vision was 6'9", but the cupping was 0 0.8 and 0.8. And when we did, the field, the, the field was damaged. The optic nerve was damaged. And this patient just had a <coughs> no gonioscopy was done in this patient. And this patient actually had a PACG. Okay. And for this patient, we did a PI. And now here you can see the angle is opened out, which is not very common. Okay, angle do not very often open out because they'll be zipped up or they'll have sinicate. For this patient, it did open out and the pressures could be controlled. Whenever you have an angle closure person, patient, you must also do a PI in the fellow eye. So we have, when we start treatment, we rule out angle closure, then which drugs do you use? These are the whole list of drugs, beta blockers, myotics, adrenergic, adrenergic adrenaline, alpha agonist, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, PG analogs, hyperosmotic agents like mantol and glycerol. Okay, so the story started long ago, more than a century ago with the first drug was pilocarpine. And pilocarpine still is the drug of choice for angle closure. But for open angle glaucoma, it is not. Number one, it causes meiosis. So the patients of glaucoma have already a tunnel vision. They may have problem in reading. Although pilocarpine increases the depth of focus and they may, they may be very comfortable with near work. Second, whenever you have to do the visual fields, the pupil doesn't dilate with after pilocarpine and your visual fields will become unreliable. So pilocarpine is not the drug of choice anymore. The drug of choice is prostaglandin if the patient can afford it. Otherwise, beta blockers alpha agonist or carbonic and inhibitors as uh, Dr. Uh, Shabiba just told, you can use any of these drugs in open angle glaucoma. So how do these drugs act? They act on the aqueous flow pathway. Okay, Aqueous humor inflow, you'll have beta blockers, alpha agonist or carbonic and in, in, uh, inhibitors. Whereas for trabecular outflow, you can have prostamides and cholinergics because pilocarpine actually is one drug which really acts at the outflow. Which new drug also acts at the outflow? Anybody? If I can't, uh, is it Rock possible? inhibitor. Rock uh, kinase. Sorry? Inhibitor. Rock kinase inhibitors. Rock kinase inhibitors. So, rock kinase inhibitors also act at the outflow, and pilocarpine also acts at the outflow. Okay. Then the uvisceral outflow, which is responsible for 20% of the outflow. However, prostamides, prostaglandins act here. And some part, uh, mild action of alpha-2 agonist also is in the uvisceral outflow. So these are the two, three ways in which the anti-glaucoma drugs act. Whenever you do a combination therapy, try to use one from each group. So if you're using one alpha agonist, try to use the other one as the prostaglandin so that you cover both aspects of the outflow or the in, or the secretion. So coming to individually to each of them. Uh, cholinergic stimulators, you have pilocarpin. Okay, you have pilocarpin. You it stimulates the mascarinic cholinergic receptors in the ciliary muscle and iris sphincter, causes ciliary muscle contraction, traction on the scleral spur. And the configuration of trabecular meshwork and schlems can all alter. So if you can see by this action, it's a very physiological drug. It increases the aqueous outflow. Because of the iris sphincter muscle contraction, the pupil block element is relieved. So this aspect acts on the open angle glaucoma element and this one acts on the ACG element. The adverse reaction is whenever you start giving pilocarpine, supposing for this 22-year-old male, Shabiba had given pilocarpine, he would have complained of headache. Why? Because there would be a ciliary muscle spasm and that would cause an accommodation spasm. And that accommodation spasm would cause a transient myopia. Okay. Second thing is it has a cataract potential. It is cataractogenic drugs. 
it potentiates the cataract and worsens vision in pre-existing cataract because of the meiosis which it causes. It can also predispose to retinal detachment. Therefore, before prescribing pilocarpine, you must rule out a retinal tear, break, or a lattice degeneration. It can also call giant papillary conjunctivitis. It deranges the blood aqueous barrier, increases permeability and inflammation. Therefore, it is not the drug of choice for uveitic cataract, a uveitic glaucoma, or post-surgery inflammation, post-surgery glaucoma. It can also sometimes cause diaphoresis or salivation. I have never seen this uh, side effect, but the other ones I have seen. You do not prescribe this drug in young age. Why? Because of the cirrhotic body spasm, the myopia, and the meiosis. In patients with cataract, in uveitic glaucoma, in neovascular inflammatory, why? Because it deranges the blood aqueous barrier. Onset of action is four to six hours. You give it three to four times a day. Second, the, the mainstay of all glaucoma people has been for many years the beta blockers, Timolol. The mechanism of action is by cyclic AMP blockage and the protein C kinase. It decreases the ultrafiltration, therefore acts at the aqueous production. Reduces aqueous production by 50%. The problem with this drug is that it has no nocturnal effect. Any idea why not? Any idea why not? Why doesn't it act at night? Okay, because it's acting at the sympathetic mediated cyclic EMP. At night time, you don't have the sympathetic drive. Therefore, this drug has no nocturnal effect. That is the uh, buzzword of prostaglandins that they have a 24-hour effect. Whereas beta blockers will have an effect from morning till evening, not at night. It can also decrease the ocular blood flow. So it is not the preferred drug for normal tensing glaucoma. It's easily available. It's reasonably economical with minimal ocular side effects. It's well tolerated. Most fixed drug, com fixed drug combinations have Timolol in incorporated. It is convenient twice a day. And it can be used for virtually all types of glaucoma, including congenital glaucoma. Side effects are pretty sig significant, and most of them are systemic. It aggravates asthma or COPD, induces bradycardia, worsens heart failure, can cause syncope in such patients. There have been in case reports of two deaths in the worldwide literature with Timolol. Metoxolol is a safer drug, but not very easily available, at least in my state. It can worsen hyperlipidemias. It masks the symptoms of hyperglycemia because the sympathetic drive kickoff is masked causes depressions, hallucinations, erectile dysfunction in younger patients. In ocular sin problems, it worsens the dry eye aspects of the patient. And it can cause stinging tachyphylaxis or short-term escape and long-term drift. Okay? Uh, just a minute. So, in well, because of the systemic side effects, as I wish, just took took oh, time. Oh, oh. You have to have a history taking is very important. You have to rule out the history of asthma, any heart problem, hyperlipidemias, and diabetes, and any uh, any psychiatric problems, and dry eyes before starting the drugs. A very simple way to reduce these side effects. Anybody? When you give one drop of Timolol, how can you reduce the systemic side effects? By doing punctal occlusion. Very good. By doing punctal occlusion. Then third one is alpha-2 agonist. So by monodine, it started with 0.2%. Now it has come to 0.1%. Why was the reduction by monodine there? by the industry from 0.2 to 0.1? Any idea? Systemic side effects? No. Allergy. Allergy was much more with 0.2. Red eye was much more with 0.2. Therefore, the industry shifted to 0.1. Okay, it works at two pathways. This is the only one which works at aqueous production as well as useful pathway. There is a study which talks about neuroprotection, but that was a study done by the company. So it is a little biased. 
However, it will be this is called as the rat crash model. And if you are asked in the exam, only Bramaldine had that ability to cause near protection. Nowadays, even rock inhibitors and PG analogs have uh, PG uh, analogs have been told have been uh, have been touted as having neuro protection. Now, this is the Bramaldine P. This is P stands for puride preservative, which is less toxic and causes less allergy. This P, P, P aspect increases pH, penetration, and reduces allergy. And that is why your bramonidine comes in teal green color bottles, never white, because the puride is sensitive to sunlight. Side effects, allergic follicular conjunctivitis, red eye is very common. Initially, it used to be 25%, now it's come to 10%. Because it acts on the alpha-1 receptor 2. It's alpha-2, but it acts on alpha-1 receptor also. Therefore, it acts on the Muller's muscle, can cause lid reduction, and iris sphincter, and causes meiosis. It does cross the blood-brain barrier. It causes sedation, drowsiness, headache. It is contraindicated in children aged less than 6 to 8 years. Because their blood-brain barrier is immature, so you do not give it in less than six to eight years. Otherwise, it can cause respiratory depression, apnea. Okay. The patients are advised not to drive for first two, one, two weeks till the tolerance comes in because it causes dry, drowsiness, allergy, apnea, and it can, it is, if you are using a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, you cannot give alpha, alpha, alpha to agonist. The next group is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Dozolomide 2%, brinzolomide 1%. Both have almost similar efficacy, but brinzolomide causes less stinging. They work at the aqueous inflow because they reduce the aqueous inflow by acting at the carbonic anhydrase present in the ciliary process. This drug has been shown to improve blood flow at the optic nerve head level. Therefore, the industry will tell you use this drug for, for patients with advanced glaucoma, or patients with normal tensive glaucoma where vascular etiology is more prominent or more, more involved, more, uh, more as the pathology. Topical carbonic anesthetic inhibitors are, can always cause irritation and stinging. It's usually transient. It can cause hypersensitivity and periorbital dermatitis because ultimately they're all sulfur derivatives. It can cause a transient increase in corneal thickness and transient blurring. Oral one, <laughs> which is astazolamide, can cause idiosyncratic transient myopia, sulfonamide related. The same myopia can also be caused by pilocarpate. Paresthesias in the, in, the, in, the, in the fingers and hands or perioral by hypokalemia. It causes urinary frequency, metabolic acidosis, renal calculi formation, alopecia, fatigue, GI symptoms are discomfort, bitter metallic taste, Blood dyscrasias are rare, but if they are present, they are invariably very devastating. So when you have the informed consent, you must warn the patient about this. And it's rarely Steven Johnson syndrome by sulfa moiety in it. You do not give this drug in pregnancy and lactation, kidney liver disease, hypochloromic acidosis, and any hypersensitivity. It acts in two to six hours. You give it three to four times, three times or twice. If it is given in combination therapy, uh, like brinzolamide or dozolamide but similar you give it twice otherwise you give it three times a day pg analogs the wonder drug which came out 20 years ago from 1997 we've had this drug latinoprost was the first one that is 0.005 percent then came the prostamides which are bimatoprost travoprost and uniprost why have i said this because latinoprost is a prostaglandin derivative and these are synthetic so this one requires an ice chain, whereas the other ones do not require an ice chain for their preservation. Now their mechanical action is they relax the ciliary muscle and increase the ureteral outflow. They upregulate the metalloproteinases and remodel the extracellular meshwork. The peak effect is in 12 hours and they have nocturnal control. But whenever you use the latinoprost or the bimat or the prostamides, please remember one-fourth or one-fifth of the patients may be non-responders. So always call the patient back after two to three weeks and check for the response. If they haven't responded, it means that this patient is a non-responder. Then you can switch the prostamides 
and if that also doesn't respond that means that you cannot use pg analogs for this patient okay in uveitis you cannot use it because it can activate the inflammation in old herpes you cannot use it because it can activate herpes simplex it can promote cystoid macular edema so any aphasic patient or patients who have had macular problems you cannot use it and in pregnancy in the last trimester you cannot use it because it can it can potentiate uterine contractions it all it call it can cause hyperemia or allergy it is less than alpha agonist but it is still there very often it causes these slash growth or hypertrichosis hyperpigmentation and hypertrichosis the hypertrichosis is permanent so whenever you give latanoprost or any prostamide unilat in, in, in a single in one eye you have to warn the patient that this lashes will grow and this this effect will be permanent okay it also causes periorbitopathy there is a sunken orbit after many years of its use it can cause myalgia or flu like symptoms and allergic contact dermatitis otherwise its systemic side effects are very minimal just the flu like symptoms it has mostly the local side effects of hypertrichosis and if also remember if your patient is light light colored iris supposing the patient has gray iris you cannot give the drug because the pigmentation of the iris will change forever more so his gray eyes will become brown eyes and he will sue you so in light colored iris if you give you have to take the consent from the patient that my iris color will change and i'm i'm okay with that hyperosmotic agent the one which we use commonly is mannitol and glycerin you give 20% mannitol and uh, 1.5 grams per kg glycerin the mechanism of action is it reduces the vitreous volume changes the osmotic gradient in blood and ocular tissue and causes instant lowering of irp that is why you use these drugs in surgery when you have a high vitreous pressure the adverse reaction is nausea vomiting diuresis headache because of cerebral dehydration and that can cause confusion fluid electrolyte imbalance metabolic acidosis blurred vision convulsion the dehydration can cause hypotension and the heart may uh, may respond by tachycardia and rarely pulmonary edema pulmonary edema now preoperatively it minimizes the posterior effect of vitreous therefore pre, pre, prior to trab in a high pressure we always give mannitol to reduce this posterior effect of the vitreous you do not give this patient high, high, high uncontrolled hypertension in cardiac failure in renal insufficiency it is very rapidly excreted through urine mannitol where glycerol is metabolized and then excreted now it is always said that glycerol you can't give in diabetes however it is not really metabolized that much that for that long so if you if the patient can't tolerate mannitol and he is a diabetic you can give glycerol keeping in keeping it for a short time before you operate so these were the in a brief nutshell about the various drugs available now how do you make a treatment strategy you base your treatment strategy always on the risk risk of blindness be the we benefit of the medication or the surgery so that's called as risk benefit ratio and for that you need a baseline iob so whenever a patient comes to you like the patient which we had discussed came for a second opinion he was not on any medication so he had a baseline iop but most patients are already on some medications so you don't have the baseline iop either you ask the doctor who is referring to get the to tell the baseline iop or some physicians also stop the medications and then look for the baseline iop because you can only select your target iop based on the baseline iop now this target iop is related to two things one is the disease and second is the patient how are the two different disease means what stage of disease it is and what is the type of glaucoma patient what is the health status of the patient what are the comorbidities what is the longevity how much life years does he have to live a 70 year old patient is a severe 22 year old patient obviously the longevity is different and what is the adherence profile of the patient so this is this, this is very often shown to you this is the seagit decision square where you have the risk and the disease status if the risk is stable uh, increased uncertain or stable or the disease status and from that point of view you go for surgery or you do for medications keeping uh, i am showing you this picture each time 
please remember when you are sitting in a country where resources are limited and the patient cannot access the healthcare system very easily your inclination towards surgery may be earlier than the developed countries so this is the treatment categories given by the cgig or the southeast asia glaucoma interest group the risk factors group 1 group 2 group 3 group 4 Group one has a high risk of progressive visual loss. These patients need a thirty percent reduction in IOP, and these for this you would require a combination of medication because none of the drugs will cause a thirty percent except PG analogs and not always. So you need usually combination or you go for a surgery. Group two is a moderate progression risk. These patients need almost a twenty percent IOP reduction. So any one drug can do. Glaucoma suspect. Okay, with a moderate risk of vision loss, just monitor. But if the risk law, if the if the risks are more, the suspect with the risk is more and a poor follow up, then you would treat. What does this mean? This means if you have a cupping, this suspect. Okay, but the IOP is like in the low twenties or mid uh, mid twenty to twenty twenty two. You would feel that this patient can be monitored. This patient can come to you and show you the OCT RNFL is borderline. You just want to keep a track. However, if this same patient has a OCT has is, is defective, there's RNFL damage. This patient is diabetic, requires frequent dilatation. This patient is diabetic, would have lot of metabolic issues. This patient comes from far away, may not be able to follow up. She or he has arthritis, may not be able to get the drugs properly put in time. those patient you would treat okay group 4 is glaucoma suspect there is a low risk of vision loss just don't treat monitor and this often is the patient with a little bit of oct change otherwise it is normal or with the glauco with the pacs which is the angle which is suspect you would just monitor so these are risk factors which are taught to us iop moment it crosses the it goes to late 20s you treat irrespective of which disease of which is the stage disc hemorrhage or vascular occlusion then you would treat earlier positive family history fellow id other eye has had glaucomatous damage treat early thin cct exfoliation any red disease which is extensive treat follow up is doubtful one eyed patient these are the risk factors for treatment so you set a target iop based on the risk factors then you how do you set the target iop it's actually a range of iop at which progression is either halted or retarded this range is dynamic it keeps changing after treatment and patient patient adherence for as i said for oht or early glaucoma it's 20% ntg you require a 30% reduction for advanced glaucoma you require it to be less than 18 or preferably less than 12 so early glaucoma keep it in high teens moderate glaucoma keep it in mid teens advanced glaucoma keep it in low teens one eyed patient go little further low teens comorbidities younger age stays far away no support system personality is a person he would not use the drugs go for surgery look for the pre treatment or the baseline iop to set the target pressure okay any questions so far on target pressure never give a single target pressure you always tell them it's a range it is dynamic it keeps changing according to the patient's response of the disease and the patient's adherence whenever you establish the pre treatment iop you don't have a single reading and whenever you have and always you do a cct correction in doubtful cases you do a diurnal variation or office diurnal what do you mean by office diurnal that you, that you don't check at night however this is not that reliable because most of the spikes of iop happen in the early morning so which is 2 to 4 am because that is when the sympathetic act drive kicks in and whenever you are looking for the iop whenever you are taking the iop rule out any systemic medication anybody knows which systemic medication okay like if you is a fresh yeah yes
if the patient is on beta blockers for some reason okay the patient is on mannitol or di or, or has been or on uh, acetylamide for cranial problems in those patients obviously you will have a lower cct if the patient is on marijuana if he is if, he, if he is using any drugs you'll have a lower iop okay which will be fallacious so always ask for a history of which medications are you using okay so this is the variation which you have in the diurnal awake time nocturnal and this is where latanoprost scores that it meant it flattens the iop curve throughout whereas stimulol would have a spike in the night time okay also decide the therapy based on the efficacy of the anti glaucoma medication especially if you are having a monotherapy pg analogs have a 25 to 35% reduction please remember it is not so high it is usually less than 30 30% in very 25% and one third to one fourth may be non responders beta blockers again the range is around 20% alpha adrenergic 20% topical ci and 20% So all the others are usually twenty percent. This is the most powerful. These are also the most powerful anti-biotic, anti-glaucoma medication. Okay. Whenever you give any drug, remember these preservatives are there. So when you are giving too many drugs in the chase, in the chasing the in the target IOP chase, you may cause ocular surface dysfunction or dry eyes. Ultimately, what are what is the patient concerned with? Vision. He is not concerned with the IOP is eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-six. He wants doctor, doctor, my vision should be stable. I should be able to do my work till I have till I till I die. Okay, that's what his aim is. And our aim is what happens is we keep changing the figures. No, your IOP is eighteen. You need to bring it to sixteen. And you have I will add one more drug. Very often the patients who come to me in my hospital they are on three anti-glaucoma drugs. You know, two to what they are always more than three. and one of them is a combination and they come to me with dry eyes with corneal problems because of this preservative toxicity so whenever you prescribe more than two drugs please remember that this becomes a problem and try to avoid more than two more than two wherever possible three only rarely that is called as a maximal treatment therapy out, out of this one of them should be wherever wherever possible to a fixed dose combination fixed drug combination because that will reduce the amount of drops going in like this patient you can see this these are all real patients of mine this was the corneal problem induced by the glaucoma by the glaucoma drugs and this back toxicity causes breakdown of corneal epithelium increases corneal permeability apoptosis and reduces the break up time the pro inflammatory cytokines are increased and these side effects are dose and time dependent therefore i am repeating do not use too many anti glaucoma drugs it is not healthy for the cornea or for the ocular surface the preservative free drops that came in with this credo that they reduce the toxicity that is why we talk about the purite purite is a stabilized oxyglycoro complex on light exposure it becomes nascent chloride radicals come in and therefore it is given in a teal green teal green bottle polyquad is the other preservative it is used in travertan given by alcon sofsia again is a preservative which is used in travertan c otherwise most drugs have which are available in the market have benzalkonium chloride so these were some of the common glaucoma drugs which are present available in the non preserved formulation now the next part comes how will you make the patient use the drug whenever you start medical management for glaucoma or whenever you diagnose the patient of glaucoma there is lot of anxiety because the patient knows that it's an irreversible disease and it's going to be lifelong therapy they are very anxious and especially in the patients who drive who are old in the in the west they all drive and they need to continue driving their main problem is that will i be able to drive will i be able to move on my own will i have my proper orientation and those who are fond of reading will i be able to do this okay so this is called as the functional loss due to disease 
and the other issue which the patient will feel would be the treatment related cost inconvenience and side effects so one is anxiety then how much will i be able to do my active call it my living activities and third how much the treatment treatment related problems happen so this all these three determine the quality of life and this quality of life you have to optimize so that the patient will be able to use the drugs which you are prescribing so for that you need to know the patient their capability and the visual requirements how do you ensure adherence for a lifestyle lifetime you explain to the patient certain things you explain to the patient how to instill the drugs the best way is ask the patient to put the eye drops in front of you once okay keep a solution of tears artificial tears ask them open the bottle show them how to put ask them to put themselves and in that case you will see which patient can put the drops clearly and which patient can't put the drops and if he can't you have to teach him how to do it or you have to ask the caregiver to do it otherwise you are just wasting the medications it is much easier to take pills than to put eye drops it's not easy it requires coordination manual dexterity and good vision and all of these are less in glaucoma patients because invariably these patients are older please remember very often in the zeal to prevent the iop uh, to reduce the iop the patient puts more than one drop tell the patient that when we have to put one drop the drop size is almost 40 microliters and phonic space is 9 microliters so only maximum 30 would be maximum if you just make a pouch of your eyelid of your phonics even then only 30 can go in the rest will be spilled out so tell them that just put one drop if you're putting more than two drop more than one drop you're just wasting the drug and causing more dermatite more more uh, skin problems so these these small tips have to be told to the patient before you start the medication then this which we talked about the the punctal occlusion do digital nld occlusion teach the patient how to do it and this will reduce the drug side effects by 50% also if you have more than two drugs never ask the patient to put one after the other ki morning put one drop timolol one drop dozolamide give them spacing especially i tell them that with the morning when you get up at 6 am or 7 am put the beta blocker first then when you're having breakfast at 8:30 or 9:30 put the dozolamide or alpha agonist there so that there is spacing and link it up with some activity then the patient remembers other aspect which you must remember is the systemic aspect now ocular blood flow has been identified as a extremely important aspect in glaucoma especially in normotensive glaucoma and in those patients in which despite medication use the glaucoma is progressing and the and the ultimate reason is the perfusion pressure perfusion pressure in a natural is the blood pressure minus the intraocular pressure and we take the diastolic blood pressure minus iop so if the blood pressure is 120 by 80 and the iop is 20 the perfusion pressure is 80 minus 20 which is 60 less than 50 perfusion pressure has an increased risk for progression especially where the vascular component of glaucoma damage is more here you look for whenever we do a diagonal variation if possible when you very very you can do the diagonal variation always look for blood pressure along with iop and then rule out the perfusion uh, check for perfusion pressure like supposing at 4 am the pressure of the eye becomes let's assume it becomes 28 and the blood pressure dips at night always and the blood pressure goes down to 70 diastolic and 100 systolic so 70 minus 30 would be 40 okay so that becomes a really low perfusion pressure so for those patients where there is nocturnal dipping of blood pressure and spikes of iop you need to train the patient to put the drug later on at night and you need to treat the hypotension induced usually this is induced by the anti hypertensive medication therefore you need to consult with the physician who is treating the blood pressure that you need to change the anti hypertensive or change the timing of the hypertensive because you don't want a too much dip in the blood pressure 
so this is about i will not go into the detail of blood of the ocular blood flow but some drugs which do increase the ocular blood flow are carbonic energy inhibitors beta blockers and systemic you can use calcium channel blockers as an anti hypertensive however this has to be in consult with the physician how do you ad ensure adherence in the most developed countries the gap study was done in usa and they found that only one fourth of the patients persisted with the medications over one year that means three fourth dropped out why 50% had problems in using the medication 35% had an improper drop administration technique therefore the importance of getting them to put the drops in front of you forgetfulness was cited as a main reason for non compliance and many patients still remained unaware that glaucoma medications would preserve their vision what happens is that very often they stop the medication that my vision hasn't improved doctor it is stay so you have to tell them in the beginning it will not improve it will never improve with medication it will just become stable and it will not worsen further if they are aware of that and they are aware that if they don't put the medication the iop spikes if they happen and can the vision can worsen this awareness and education will ensure <laughs> the next thing we talked about is whenever possible to the fixed drug combination and any remembering strategy synchronized with the daily schedule morning tea or brushing your feet, brushing your teeth you just synchronize your anti glaucoma medication uh dr vijayalakshmi it's almost 8 uh, o'clock you want me to continue with the uh, new advances or you want the other student to present now hello hello Ah, bindu, are the cases ready? Yeah, are the cases ready? Yeah, that is more relevant for them. Hmm. Are the cases ready? Detty, can you press? Uh, okay, and I will stop sharing. Hmm. Detty, your screen sharing and um, Meeda is presenting. Are you madam. hearing me, Detty? Yes, madam. No. Okay, then uh, without wasting much time, can you just start sharing? Mm. Again, you have problem. I didn't just screen share it, I know. Yeah, I like. madam this time the dnb exam uh, clinics will be online it will be virtual or anything come as come okay. about it, madam idil share I'll... content il ed edukkan what did you say ma'am vijay lakshmi madam ppt nan background il thornittund powerpoint il screen on screen on share screen that your file and the many plans of uh, doing it virtually or anything like that i was just asking about them dnb exam i am not able to hear you dnb exam will be taken virtually yeah, i'm not the sure exam. i'm not sure because okay. what happened last time was that there were two examiners who came and uh, the one i saw and it was social distancing and the cases were virtual like you know the pictures were there and the exam was taken on a physical this thing because taking a virtual exam for ms students is going to be difficult for mbbs you can still do it i'm not sure i'm not sure how it will happen it's some this virus has made us all rethink let's see how it will happen we can't delay it longer how many students do you have in your college uh, i mean we have 10 as of now 10 students are there but the appearing will be two people this time when are they appearing no they dates have not come no ma'am dates haven't come yet 
Betty, if you have any problem, I think. Uh, can you screen share, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi or Dr. Bindu? You can screen share, and you know they can just take. They it. are from a different college, madam. Oh, I see. Okay. So we don't have the content with us, madam. Oh, I see. Okay. They are from the Government Medical College, Kolkata. Betty, do you want Roshna to present another similar case? मैडम नेचुरल शेयर है मैडम हम शेयर है नो कुंडल यस ओके फिफ्टी फाइव रोल्ड मैडम फिफ्टी फाइव रोल्ड ईमेल होम मेकर फ्रॉम कोलीकोट Presented with defective vision for both eyes, six years duration, history of presenting illness. Patient noticed defective vision in both eyes. Defective vision was painless, insidious in onset, slowly progressive. She consulted local hospital for the same and was detected to have increased pressure in her eyes. She was referred to Government Medical College for report for further management. from here she was evaluated and was started on one topical medication to be used at night initially later it was increased to three drops in both eyes she was on regular follow up since 2017 until one year back when she uh, uh, could not come to opd due to covid pandemic she underwent surgery in right eye to reduce pressure one month back and has come for follow up now history of spectacle use for 6 years no history of frequent change in spectacles no history of any ocular trauma or other surgery in the past past history no history of diabetes mellitus hypertension coronary artery disease dyslipidemia no history of bronchial asthma copd allergy no history of thyroid disease migraine seizure psychiatric disorders no history of any previous surgery Personal history: normal sleep and appetite, regular bowel and bladder habits, no addictions. Family history: she is married with three children, no history of blindness or similar illness in the family. Drug history: no history of any drug allergy. Now she is on lecanoprost, timolol, and rimonidine eye drops in left eye. No medications in the right eye. general examination patient is conscious oriented cooperative moderately built and nourished no pallor express cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy or fetal edema skin hair nails were normal vitals pulse rate 68 per minute regular rhythm, rhythm normal volume uh, character condition of vessel wall normal no radio femoral delay blood pressure 120 bar 80 mm of mercury in right arm in sitting position systemic examination cardiovascular system s1 s2 heart no murmur respiratory system bilateral normal vesicular breath sounds no added sounds parabdomen soft no tender no organomegaly central nervous system high and mental functions with the normal ability ocular examination head posture normal extraocular movements full both sides no facial asymmetry orthophoric right eye lid and adnexa lengthening of lashes present no evidence of hyperpigmentation of periocular skin or deepening of upper lid sulcus conjunctiva dilated epithelial vessel a diffuse blood extending from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock position superiorly above limbus with dilated tortuous vessels overlying the blood cornea normal size shape and transparency uh, no evidence of stromal edema no evidence of uh, keratotic precipitate uh, or pigment deposition over endothelium corneal sensation normal anterior chamber banharis grade 2 uniform depth both centrally and peripherally iris 
hyper pigmentation of iris presents a single peripheral triangular defect of 2 mm seen superiorly at 12 o'clock position suggestive of surgical iridectomy which was patent no evidence of iris nodules iris atrophy or neoplasia of iris pupil right uh, uh, single round with direct reflex sluggish consensual reflex brisk grade 1 rapd present len nucleus sclerosis grade 1 left side lid and nxa lengthening of lashes present no evidence of hyperpigmentation of periocular skin or deepening of being uh, repeated uh, sulcus oh left side okay good continue continue meda continue uh, sorry cornea uh, cornea um, conjunctiva uh, dilated epithelial vessels present in left side no evidence of folicles cornea normal size and shape transparency corneal sensation normal anterior chamber uh, van herich grade 2 uniform disc both centrally and peripherally iris hyperpigmentation of iris present no evidence of iris nodules iris atrophy or neovascularization of iris pupil left side single round the direct reflex brisk consensual reflex sluggish lens nucleus sclerosis grade 1 pupil conduct examination right side uh, with 90d media clear disc margins defined uh, vertical uh, 2.2 mm horizontal height of uh, 1.7 mm cup disc ratio of 0.8 vertically 0.8 horizontally deep cup lamina dot sign present nrr tail nasalization of vessels present bayonetting present diffuse rnfl loss present beaches on atrophy present no evidence of disc hemorrhage um, on indirect ophthalmoscopy media is clear disc is defined cup disc ratio 0.8 nrr is thin and pale vessels uh, uh, are normal with an av ratio of 2 is to 3 fr is dull left side Uh, with 90 degree examination media is clear disc margins defined uh, vertical 2.2 mm horizontal 1.7 uh, cup disc ratio of 0.7 vertically and 0.7 horizontally deep cup lamina dot sign present nasalization of vessels present bayonetting present superiorly disc hemorrhage present just above the disc between superior temporal and supra nasal arch no evidence of peripapillary atrophy or rnf loss media is clear disc is defined cup disc ratio 0.7 nrr is thin uh pink fr is dull visualize periphery within normal means and the picture of right and left eye right eye nrr is pale, uh, pale. cup disc ratio is 0.8 vertically and horizontally left eye nrr is uh, pink uh, cup disc ratio 0.7 vertically and horizontally bayonetting present uh, superiorly Uh, uh, lamina dot sign present uh, uh, red free filter rnf loss present uh, diffuse rnf loss is present in the right eye whereas there is no rnf loss in the left eye functional examination right eye vision 6 by 60 Uh, with pin hole improving to 6 by 12 with uh, present glass uh, improving to 6 by 12 uh, near vision is n24 uh, with uh, left eye vision is 6 by 24 with pin hole improving to 6 by 9 with uh, present glass 6 by 9 near vision uh, n12 uh, with present glass n6 refraction uh j plus refraction uh, at 1.5 meters uh, 
2 by 3 um, uh, 2 by 3 meter uh, uh, plus 4 refraction uh, both in um, vertical and horizontal meridians both i pmt with plus 2 dcs uh, 6 by 12 uh, near vision plus uh, 2.5 dcs uh, n6 uh, left eye with uh, plus 2.5 dcs uh, 66 near vision with plus 2.50 uh, dcs n6 Uh, peripheral field by Lister's uh, perimetry by 3 mm by target at 33 cm defective right eye left eye uh, uh, defective central field by Jerome screen at distance of 1 meter using 3 mm target uh, right eye def uh, defective left eye uh, full uh, IOP by application tonometry on uh, 25 21 at 11 am uh, 10 mm of mercury in right eye 12 mm of mercury in left eye gonioscopy uh, shaffer's grade uh, Two superiorly, uh, two um, nasally, three temporally, and uh, three inferiorly. Uh, 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 left eye uh, gonioscopy. Um, Shaffer's grade two. Um, uh, all quadrants. No evidence of neovascularization of angle or peripheral anterior sinusoidal. Peripheral field by Lister's perimetry. and uh, right eye and left eye central field of right eye showing uh, central um, uh, uninvolved uh, field peripheral um, hfi of hfi 24-2 of uh, right eye and left eye lito kalikade both are reliable both are reliable right eye shows a uh, uh, tubular field left eye shows peripheral scotomas Ten dash two um, uh, of both eyes, both are labeled. Uh, right eye shows um, uh, 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 superior scotomas and inferior scotomas. Uh, uh, left eye ten uh, dash two field shows no evidence of any scotomas. OCT RNFL. shows a red uh, in all quadrants next slide opt arnav club left side um, shows uh, green in uh, superior nasal area quadrant and red in uh summary 55 female with no comorbidity presented with complaints of gradually progressive painless defective vision both eyes right eye more than left eye for 6 years duration general and systemic examination within normal limits on examination right eye shows elevated filtering blood with overlying vascularity um a pa is in at 12 o'clock position patient bleeding are present in right eye disc shows sub disc ratio of 0.8 in right eye And point seven in left eye. Temporary NRA being uh, seen at. Benign present. LD sign present both eyes. Refraction shows simple hypermetropia both eyes. IOP is in normal limits both eyes. HFI twenty four dash two shows tubular field in right eye. Peripheral scotoma involving superior and inferior hemisphere left eye. Central field is defective in right eye. Diagnosis: Primary open-eyed glaucoma, both eyes. Post: Trabeculectomy, right eye. Simple hypermetropia, both eyes. Nucleus: Nucleus sclerosis, grade one, both eyes. Okay, Meeta. So let's go Madam. back to slide one. Thank you. Let's go back to slide one.
so your presenting complaint was a 50 year, year old female uh, with complaints of defective vision both eyes moment you say this defective vision you will have to give more details painless progressive painful okay. episodes of pain uh, episodes of intermittency was this uh, was this vision uh, did you do you have to give more details about this in the next slide next one so diminution was painless insidious solely progressive and she was referred you don't you don't give this history of presenting complaints in this this is treatment history okay so you will say diminution okay, of vision right. noticed both eyes it was painless progressive incidence and progressive the same painless progressive patient was diagnosed with glaucoma and prescribed medications that's it next slide so this you are you are telling the treatment history this is not history of presenting illness regular follow up surgery spectacle the other one now moment you'll say painless progressive diminution of vision in a 55 year old female go back go back yeah 55 year old female no so next one next one next so the moment you have these first two lines nahi beta go one slide back one slide back yes just keep it here now diminution of vision was painless and progressive only this one line is important the first line is not important so diminution of vision painless progressive over the last 6 years has been on some topical medication okay in the history mm -hmm. you will not say that she has glaucoma you will try to differentiate the different causes of painless progressive diminution of vision at the age of 55 what are they uh, what are the causes please, of 55 year old female sorry uh, cataract one is cataract number 2 diabetic retinopathy uh, hypertensive retinopathy involving the, involving the macula okay macula number 3 hypertensive hypertensive retinopathy involving macula very rare you don't find hypertension causing you know papilledema and uh, macular star would come with a very late stage and that's not very common so first is cataract what else age related macular degeneration so age related macular degeneration cataract diabetic retinopathy glaucoma and also 55 year old you may you may have a refractive error which was uncorrected which is now worse so what you should ask in the next line is first line should be diminution of vision painless progressive for the last 6 years cataract if it was cataract what would be the history you would rule out there was no hist and glaucoma uh, patient was uh, the, the vision did not improve with glasses or it improved you have to say it not improved with glasses okay there was no diurnal variation there was the or uh, there is history of spectacle use for last x y z months okay there is no history of frequent change of glasses okay ma'am there is no history of colored halos glare photophobia okay the early cataract is all the signs of cataract okay and trauma okay, ocular trauma or surgeries in the past you would put it last 55 year old world you would not think of trauma as the first thing for a painless progressive diminution of vision the other patient had 10 days history so there you would think of it painless progressive will not think of ocular trauma as the first thing so you will not cataract by the history of uh, by diagonal variations by the history of colored halos or by history of uh, photophobia macular degeneration will rule out by the history of that she has no distortion of images which is metamorphopsia okay and she has no history of uh, okay. any uh, floaters or any flashes of photopsia or floaters okay and you would rule out the uh, diabetic retinopathy okay. not here you can't rule it out by any other thing and then you would say patient was the was prescribed glasses spectacle correction with and the vision did not improve with that she was seen by a by a doctor and the hair there she was diagnosed to have glaucoma and started on medications okay right eye was uh, had a surgery done 
a month back then you'll go to treatment history treatment history patient was on patient was started on medical me medical management of anti glaucoma drugs which was increased from 1 to 3 For, subsequently she was subjected to a trabeculectomy in the right eye and currently she is okay. on three medication the left eye and nil not none in the right eye okay you will not say that she could not okay, come for back covid pandemic regular follow up there is no need to say that in the history while presenting okay because this confuses you have to come to the target okay. you will do not cataract do not armd do not uh, diabetic retinopathy do not glaucoma okay next okay madam next slide past history here it's fine no history of diabetes hypertension coronary artery disease dyslipidemias this is fine previous surgeries you already said no she had a trabeculectomy one month ago so obviously she's had a surgery okay yes madam so okay madam you written sleep history anybody wants to tell me something further about sleep in glaucoma what are the sleep studies in glaucoma showing nowadays anyone knows obstructive sleep apnea syndrome very good so of of uh, obstructive sleep apnea okay or swas as it is called as sleep obstructive sleep apnea so she you should be mentioned here that the sleep was normal with no evidence of apnea so again the examiner knows that you have thought of sleep apnea okay next okay ma'am next Okay. she is on three drugs namely latinoprost timolol bimonidine left eye and controlled with trabeculectomy in the right eye is she saying no anti glaucoma medications she is currently on three drugs namely 1 to 3 in the left eye and no medicare and controlled on the controlled with trabeculectomy in the right eye which means that the trabeculectomy is functional next okay i would not say drug history i would say treatment history for this because surgery is not a drug history again here you don't need to in the exam you will not have so much time to look at the general examination of the patient you'll have four patients you'll have to look at look at them or two patients depending on how many you have and you will not have time for this so stop looking at details because next one also next page next slide blood pressure pulse if you have time great but focus on the ocular examination first do this last if you have time otherwise this will not much this will not give you any additional points or any brownie points it will not help you next and you will waste time in this not required none of this is required only you will be said this no asthma and no cardiac problems that's it now come to ocular examination what we normally do is we put the visual acuity first you have put visual acuity later as the functional or the right functional uh functional exam examination okay uh, we normally don't prescribe that you put the visual acuity first distance near right eye left eye and whatever correction is used let's say she's hypermetropic class 1 cylinder or class 1 uh, she's astigmatic or hypermotic hypermetropic class 2 diopter sphere with minus 1 cylinder or class 1 cylinder you write the power of classes there okay then did a like it next sir you would not write lengthening of lashes now this is your examination you would write hypertrichosis okay use the technical okay, word hypertrichosis hyperpigmentation and deepening of the sulcus means periorbital atrophy so all the three signs which we had okay. talked about the side effects of the prostaglandins are there in this patient okay. right we had just talked about that okay, okay. then you have in the right side you should always make a diagram uh, if you don't have a i mean in the exam you will not have a picture to be taken you have to make a diagram by hand of the eye the cornea as a circle and the proper trabeculectomy blab you should have a you should have colored pencils with you in the exam mark the blood vessels with red one diagram will give you more marks than two pages of write up same way for the optic nerve head you should okay. have a diagram i forgot to tell that to the previous speaker also previous student always have a pencil red green blue pencil color diagram when you are 
giving the, when you're presenting a case. Here you have the pictures, you are, so you're showing. That's fine. Otherwise, for exam purposes, you should make a diagram. Is it clear? So for gonioscopy as well as for fundus, okay. as well as here for a trabeculectomy. And I would have appreciated if here you would have told me whether this trabeculectomy is functional or not functional. How will you know if it's functioning? Microcystic spaces uh, within the epithelium, slightly elevated blood uh, right. with, with no overlying vessels. No, so what is the blab classification? Go for IBAS classification. Okay, Indiana blab scale. You, when you have the height, the extent, the vascularity, and the any Seidel's test. Okay, so all blabs when you whenever you have a trabeculectomy okay. case, you must put the give the eye bags or the other more fields classification. I prefer eye bags because that's latest. If you if you give more fields, that's also all right. <coughs> So draw the diagram, eye bags, and you will say to the examiner that this bleb is functional. Why? Because I can see the microcystic spaces or because when you saw in the gonioscopy, you wrote about the sclerostomy. You should also mention sclerostomy, ostium is open or occluded. And the IOP is normal. If the bleb, if the IOP is 12, obviously the trabeculectomy is working, right? So functionality of a trabeculectomy okay. is based on the morphology and, and the function. Morphology is the cystic spaces, the extent, the height, and there should not be any excessive vascularity, and the functionality is by the IOP control. So moment you talked about the, the bleb, you should say this bleb appears functional. Okay? Then come to the cornea. So epithelial okay. is normal, normal size, shape, transparencies. Um, why have you written stromal edema, epithelial edema, no KPs, pigment deposition? Why have you have specially looked for them? Because now this patient is one month post trab. She should be on steroids, topical steroids, which you haven't mentioned. So if she's on topical steroids, there would be some element of, you know, corneal issues, okay, which you should have written in this because obviously mm -hmm. one month post trab. how long do you give the topical steroids in trabeculectomy? What's the duration of steroids for trabeculectomy? Steroid antibiotic combination? Six weeks. To, um, six you give to six to eight, you give for six to eight weeks. Okay. For cataract, you give for three to four weeks. But for a glaucoma surgery, you give for six to eight weeks because your bleb modulation keeps happening. And again, go back, go back, beta. Here, you, you know the slide one before. You should have also mentioned here. This is the picture. Just show me the picture again. No, the, the, the bleb picture. Yeah. So this is an elevated bleb. Okay, and this seems to be encapsulated and this is an engorged vessel. So this may be an early failing blip. Do you people have releasable sutures? If, if, if you find a patient in your exam with releasable sutures, you should write that. If not, then don't say negative. But if it is there, you should say that releasable suture is there and this engorged blip is there. And when you are discussing the patient further, now this vessel is an angry vessel. So this vessel would need a little bit of steroids. You, you will need to carry on steroids for a longer time because this is angry blend. Okay. Next. Uh, next. I can't read it anymore. It's too uh, small. Make make the make it make, go to slideshow. It was visible before. It has now become. Yeah, this is better. There's no such word as single pupil. It's a circular pupil, normal size shape. Okay, just write normal size shape. Single pupil, okay. you'll talk about patients with developmental glaucomas with axon field triggers or essential iris atrophy. In that, you need to hear, you would not need to say single. With sing, uh, round pupil, rising, uh, round circular, circular pupil with direct, direct reflex sluggish, consensual brisk, grade one RFED, left eyes, consensual sluggish. Okay, 
nucleus create one again make a diagram make a diagram of the nucleus of the cataract okay draw the nucleus draw the cortex and draw the nucleus callosus same way here make a do a diagram oh, just go back just go back go back go back go back yeah you have written van herings it's not van herings it is van herings okay okay ma'am okay. herings right van herings okay next 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 yeah so do a make a diagram or diagram a picture has carries a thousand words in it itself okay and here also if you could have said that if you would have said which size size is normal average, average size large size small size okay cd ratio 0.8 and 0.8 so it's a it's a circular circular cup with a pointed a pointed horizontal and vertical dimensions deep cup with the nasalization of vessel vessels beta zone atrophy is not there it's called as beta zone phase in beta zone itself means atrophy of the retinal inner layers of the retina so when we, if you say beta zone you don't say atrophy you say beta zone is alpha zone present so you, if alpha zone is present you should say alpha and beta zone both present no evidence of disc hemorrhage here in the left side you don't disc hemorrhage so you should draw the disc hemorrhage very clearly now disc hemorrhage means what what does disc hemorrhage imply moment will say disc hemorrhage the question will be what does disc hemorrhage imply progression of disc progression of progression is Uncut. It is progression of the progression. So the pressure here in this patient was twelve. If I remember correctly, it was twelve in the left eye, right? But she has a disc hemorrhage. So what does it mean that this area can progress? That means your target pressure is not reached. So the pressure may be twelve fourteen, but if you have a disc hemorrhage on three anti glaucoma drugs, this means that this this sign of yours. will tell you that this patient needs to either check the compliance whether the three drugs are being used and if they are being used in that case this patient is progressing and if she is progressing what will you do for an advanced glaucoma you will do a trabeclectomy for this eye also clear okay madam understood so this is how the viva will go okay moment you say disc okay. hemorrhage it will also go as disc hemorrhage seen in which type of glaucoma Normal tension. It is seen more often in normal tensive glaucoma, but I can't see a disc hemorrhage here. Where is the disc hemorrhage? Just point it out to me. I can't see any disc hemorrhage. Where? It's not visible to me. It's there superiorly. Okay, if it was there, maybe at this picture is not visible. So, woman, you said this come the 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 viva will go on the vascular aspects. The viva will go on the blood flow, which I was talking about, because this hemorrhage means the blood flow is deranged. The viva will also go on which drugs you want to use. Now, this patient is on latanoprost. And this patient is on timolol and brimonidine. If you have disc hemorrhage, I just took the lecture. Okay, which drug would you prefer? Now, which topical anti anti glaucoma medication you prefer, which will increase the blood flow? Carbonic and hydrous inhibitors. You would try. You would try to shift the brimonidine with the dorsolamide. Okay, you won't want to substitute brimonidine with dorsolamide, especially because you said the epithelial vessels were dilated in the left eye. so obviously there is an allergy to the to the drugs one more thing you have three drugs being put in the eye it would have been really lovely if you would have taken the tear break up time or the tear status that would have told the examiner that dr medha has thought about the ocular toxicity ocular subtoxicity and ruled out the tear fill abnormality so beauty takes less than 10 seconds to do you shouldn't waste time taking the blood pressure and the vitals just to the but or in that conioscopy but tonometry and corneal thickness for all glaucoma patients 
especially if you are on anti glaucoma medication because i just showed you the presbyopia toxicity causes tear film abnormality next slide so again nerve fiber loss is more in the right eye left eye it is you still have some nerve fibers next so this as i said i would have done this exam this vision testing first thing okay when you are giving the exam put that as first there is nothing called as functional examination it's all about vision okay next and glasses power you should mention there again i am not sure about what you would uh, what your what your college protocol is we would uh, not do uh, listers or gerums if we have done the humphrey moment you do automated perimetry the role of listers and gerums becomes there there is no role okay because the gold standard is automated perimetry so listers and gerums again you have wasted time in doing that exam may you will not have listers neither you'll have gerums neither you'll have automated but if you have asked which one you'll do you'll do a automated perimetry okay so you should not do these any more in, uh, in in any exam purposes here you've written iop of 10 and 12 as i just said this patient has now advanced glaucoma so what was advanced glaucoma may what should the target pressure target pressure should be how much low teens meda low teens low teens so this is very much in the target pressure okay but i feel i did not see this hemorrhage i feel in the right in the right eye this patient is being over medicated the three drugs are not required if there is corneal tortuosity of the conjunctival vessels and the cup is 0.7 you can afford to have just two drugs okay so that will be called as how to how to discuss the target iop next in the gonioscopy you return 2 2 3 again as i said you should write atm 2 means atm and after an arrow make an arrow and then write with manipulation if it is ptm or with manipulation also if it is atm okay i'll in the end i'll just share dr uh, vijalakshmi and dr bindu just tell me i will share a gonioscopy picture of how we should draw the gonio diagram and again once you've written ostium is visualized you should write if ostium is patent or not okay and in the left eye there is no pi only in the right because it is a the angles are two if the angles are two that means this is not an open angle glaucoma ma'am right right eye you may say it's become 3 and 2 after surgery but the left eye has had no surgery so how is this an open angle glaucoma when you're saying 2 are you with me when moment you say gonioscopy is 2 it becomes a closed angle glaucoma that is why it's important to write atm ptm still is first really body band what is visible what is visible and if it is anterior trabecular mesh work visible in that case as per icgo classification this becomes a primary angle closure glaucoma psc psc in those situations this patient should have had a pi correct next what happened why you stop sharing nitty what happened nitty what happened i don't know Anyway, I remember what you have had written. So this is uh, gonioscopy. You have to check. Then we do not do that. Hum, uh, listers and gerums. And when you when you showed the visual fields, when you showed the ten dash two, you should also say there that ten dash two was done because in twenty four dash two there was no pattern emerging. And moment you do ten dash two, the diagnosis becomes advanced glaucoma. and the moment you do 10 dash 2 you should also say whether there is macular split or no macular split why because macular split if it is there the risk of snuff out and the risk of damage progressing after trabeculectomy especially if this hypotony is much more so you will prognosticate when we do a surgery in a macular split you will write down and inform you will take informed consent that my vision can deteriorate okay 
so you should have you said that oct you have done great but again oct from both from exam purposes and from clinical has not much role because here the visual field is so much damaged so there's no doubt about the diagnosis if at all if oct was done for such an advanced glaucoma which type of strategy you will do meda what strategy in oct you will do you will not do rnsl what strategy will you do no. sorry uh so for early diagnosis of glaucoma no well you have written you have done oct for this patient no now advanced glaucoma where the visual field is showing you a double okay. arcuate scotoma you will not do an oct you don't need to do an oct to confirm glaucoma it's already confirmed so why would you make the patient spend 10000 rupees you are in a government hospital it may be free but otherwise clinically you have to you have to optimize your resources so in the exam you will say i don't need an oct if at all oct is required what type in that case you will order for a ganglion cell complex or a macular gcc why because macular gcc will give you a give you a signal of how much of the retinal ganglion cells are left at the macular again for prognostication of the disease the patient will ask you will i remain not will i remain will, will my vision remain till i am alive so if the macular gcc is good despite advanced glaucoma you can prognosticate otherwise you will have a now see here here in this visual field you said there is peripheral what is the word you use peripheral uh, defect this is a absolutely double arcuate or a gerum scotoma in the left eye and in the right eye and right eye it is so advanced that there is no pattern deviation possible okay again while field you should have said i do not mm. remember what you said if it is reliable or not i can't see very clearly here is it less than 20% the false positive and negatives because there is no fixation there is no gaze tracker also it periodically you don't have a gaze tracker down there which the previous which the previous student had so i can't make out and how will you say this is advanced field defect me the advanced glaucoma how does the visual field define glaucoma glaucoma is mild moderate advanced md is how much here mean deviation so md 6 to less than 6 6 to 12 minus 6 minus 6 minus 6 to minus 12 and more than minus 12 more than minus 12 will go by go for advanced glaucoma that is the what criteria is that it is called as the hodap anderson pattern patterson criteria okay hap criteria or the anderson criteria sorry hodap anderson parish could have anderson parish criteria or the it's called it's known by the name of anderson because he wrote the book anderson book of visual fields perimetry that is one of the earliest books written so as per anderson criteria this field defect is showing you advanced damage okay that is why you went and did the 10-2 in both eyes go forward go forward next slide please yeah no next slide bachcha next slide yeah so in the right eye you have the macula also encroached in the left eye your macula is clean so oct here has not much role because you already have established glaucoma and in this you are anyway doing a rnfl pattern you don't need the rnfl strategy here you need the macula tube strategy or the ganglion cell complex okay next 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 slide so this summary is too long you will say a 55 year old bilateral oag pooag however i would not say poag because left eye gonioscopy is showing you acg so if it is poag you would say advanced poag bilateral 55 year old with advanced bilateral poag right eye operated functional trap left eye 
कंट्रोल्ड ऑन थ्री एंटी ग्लाकोमा मेडिकेशन फिनिश्ड आपको आगे जो आगे बोलने की जरूरत ही नहीं है एच एफ एन ट्यूबुलर फील पेरिफोस्कोटोमा इट्स नॉट पेरिफोस्कोटोमा इट्स कॉल्ड एज जेरमोटोमा ये सब बोलने की यू डोंट नीड टू से एनी थिंग ऑफ दिस ओके यू वी ऑल्सो से राइट आई फिल्टरिंग ब्लेब इज लिटल वैस्कुलर I would like to give steroids for longer and uh, just check for any bleb failure. And also say if the left eye has actually an optic nerve head hemorrhage, which is also called as Stephen Dranz hemorrhage. Okay, the word is Dranz hemorrhage. In that situation, I would like to do a do a trabeculectomy in the left eye also because either the compliance is poor or this disease is progressing. and in that way you have to go for a more definitive treatment already she is on three anti glaucoma drugs you can't add the fourth okay any questions any questions uh dr vijay lakshmi if you can just show i'll just show you the doctor uh, okay Bindu. you have to stop sharing the screen deti deti dr bindu Yes, you are yeah. not. I'll just show you gonioscopy if I can. Let me just check. PG, any questions? Uh, either you can ask, ma'am, directly, or you can put in the chat box. madam is there any difference between macular threat and macular split or both I, are I the just, same i just tell you just just let me just get to the gonio picture goniogram just give me a moment beta i'll just come back to you Can you see this? Is it visible to you? This yes, is how you yes, should yes, draw yes, the yes. draw the disc. Okay. Here I've drawn as per DDLS criteria. This is how you should draw in the exam. And for gonioscopy, I'm not able to find something. I'll just uh, uh, just uh, you just draw a gonioscopy. You just draw these lines like that. Uh, the 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 three the. Uh, the lines like the the goniogram like that and then in the top we written four you should write atm and then an arrow going to ptm or steroid spur which means the arrow means that with manipulation you have reached the steroid spur and then you have to go for the uh, depending on the uh, ic icgo classification you have to oh, sorry you have to uh, classify it as as Why am why am I saying manipulative each time is when you do a static gonioscopy which is done with a two mirror or a single mirror that is called as a static gonioscopy. Then you manipulate is you make the patient look in the mirror that makes the over the hill phenomena. So if the visibility is still the anterior trabecular meshwork, it comes to the steroid spur that still remains the primary angle closure glaucoma suspect. So those patients, if they are at risk. you need to follow up or you need to uh, do a pi if not at risk you will follow up whereas if with manipulation also it doesn't open up that means it is definitely a uh, glaucoma suspect those patients uh, you can go for a pi earlier on so the treatment changes depending on your 
manipulative or the uh, static gyroscopy having said that if you people are used to four mirror that is better posner or sasman dance four mirror will give you indentation gyroscopy and that is easier and faster how it requires a little bit more technical expertise so for most students it is preferable to start with single mirror or double mirror so in goniogram you should draw uh, if i will send you a goniogram dr bindu and you can share yes, with sir. other people yes. i am not able to find in my presentations the disc diagram i found yes. so i hope i have answered the questions and how they are presenting and what were the issues in presentation any other questions i'll be happy to take up unless you are tired and you are you were asking about macula split yeah what was what was the question macula banna uh, yes ma'am ma'am what is the difference between macula split and uh, macula thread and which is more dangerous both are same macula split is the terminology used in the perimetric evaluation on the automatic perimetry when you have the in the 10-2 or the macula threshold in the macular program if you have the fixation central fixation area involved ideally it should be macular but it can also be used in 10-2 in those situations you will say that the macula is at threat and these patients can have a hypotonus maculopathy and a snuff out syndrome when you uh, when you do surgery having said that touch wood i haven't seen a snuff out in my career but uh, as per textbook it does exist Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? We have no more questions, I think. Okay, I think it's exhaustive. Huh? Two and a half hours. <laughs> Not at all exhaustive, ma'am. I mean, it was very interesting. Yes, really superb. Yeah, point by point, meticulous. Actually, it was more learning experience for us to become a better teacher. Actually, really grateful thank to you, ma'am. Uh, a pleasure thank always. You. I'll just do the official word of thanks. Uh, we are really indebted to you, madam. The PGs are really grateful to you for this excellent teaching. For them, it is like point to point from the history to the diagnosis to the management. I think now they are ready to go for any exam with a glaucoma case because always and all always there is a case of glaucoma. There will always be either a fundus case or will also be there and a clinical case. Always you will have glaucoma. It was really a wonderful learning experience. I know the PGs will be really grateful to you, madam. Thank you very much. And actually, in spite of the busy schedule and the post you hold, you came to us and then you did your presentation. It was really, really, we are really indebted to you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and I thank our president, Dr. Vijayalakshmi, and our secretary, Vice Secretary, Dr. Sujit, for organizing this and bringing you here, madam. Thank you. We would like to have you virtual and both platform in future. We'd like to be associated with you definitely, madam. Sure. Sure. And, and I, have, if you I, if you could if you could just help me out, I am trying to find you know have this move all over Delhi and Pan India. That please tell your students to do gonioscopy. If we can prevent ACG in time, we would be doing a great service to our countrymen. Please let them do gonioscopy properly and PI in time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We'll do that. Now. Thank you. And can I thank the PGs for this active participation? We really have a very good number. Thank you very much, all the PGs. How many and PGs did we have? How many PGs did we have? Six or something. Like Lakshmi, sixty. Sixty. Yeah, sixty. Sixty. Yeah. Sixty. Yeah. Okay. And I finally thank our pharma company, Pais and Ajanta Pharma, for helping out with this Zoom platform. Thank you very much. Actually, we are expecting more PGs, ma'am, but they got COVID duties and uh, emergency duties, so all of them couldn't. Log in, madam. All the PGs are telling a big thank you to ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> really great question. Thank you, Sujit and Dr. Ah, madam, this is a Sujit, a vibrant secretary. I think ma'am is left the window. Okay. It's okay. Madam has left actually. Okay. So everything went on fine, right, madam? Uh, yeah. Everything yeah. went on well. Only Meda had some problem logging in first, but. Um, by the time they had presented everything in time. Anyway, thank you, PGs. See you for our next program. Mm. That's all to Sujit and Vijayakshi. <laughs> Bindu conducted beautifully. Bindu, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't join on time. Mm -hmm.
നല്ലൊരു പി ജി ഗ്ലോക്കോമ ക്ലാസ് ആയിരുന്നു അല്ലെ ബിന്ദു ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഹലോ സതീഷ് അജന്ത പറഞ്ഞു മാഡം താങ്ക് യു മാഡം ഫോർ ദിസ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി മാഡം താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് ആൻഡ് ഡി ജി എം ആൾസോ സഞ്ജയ് നോട്ടിയൻ ആൾസോ ഹലോ Yes, Sanjay. Yeah, please. Doctor, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I think it has been absolutely spellbound, so quite mesmerizing and a free willing interview kind of thing or maybe I'll say interaction. And uh, with this, I'll say Dr. Kirti, I'll be calling separately on one-to-one basis as well. But at the same time here, I thanks and I compliment all the PGs as well. Our future, I'll say, caretaker of society. And before we conclude, uh, Dr. Suji, Dr. Bindu and Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. We would like to have more such kind of platforms as and when you feel we are of any use. Since we have two dedicated division of glaucoma and Ajanta as such is the, I think, biggest field force we have employed in the industry if you compare with any other company. And we have been known for one particular thing that is introducing all new molecules. Even last year, if you are a student, wish to have all the PGs uh, Dr. Kirti have given a program on use of Ripasudil Ripatec uh, post-trap to take care of fibroblast or blab formation. That was, a, I'll say, superb show. If you're a student, wish to have it, or maybe all the doctors, we can share it with you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.